Do you think the internet will be full of friendly, awesome people? No! It will only be filled with trolls who hate you and all of the bands you like. Now the whole internet knows how stupid and ugly you are. This is the dragon of self-doubt. He's my editing partner. The first thing is not a makeup tip per se, but more of a skincare thing, and deals with acne. I never ever hear people talk about using anti-wrinkle creams to control acne. People's skin kind of seems to fall into one of two camps, the glycolic acid, salicylic acid, um, benzyl peroxide, proactive-ish type route, or none of that stuff works and the retinoid compounds do the trick. Vitamin A compounds are actually uh, very, very good for both preventing wrinkles, but also for controlling acne. What do anti-wrinkle creams, retinoids, and vitamin A have to do with each other? Well, Dragon, vitamin A is a type of retinoid compound, and retinoid compounds are really good for your skin. What I use right here, this is a Neutrogena, a retinol facial treatment with multivitamins. So this is what it looks like. You can get this at the drugstore. The second thing is kind of a hack when it comes to obtaining the tools you need to apply stuff to your face without looking like a clown. People talk about their Sigma 125.3 brush, which is very important to be able to smudge out their smoky eye just so. A lot of those brushes are really expensive. A really good hack to get around that is to go to your art store. It'll be pretty much identical to any of the fancy brushes. They'll be a lot cheaper. I got this lovely little fan brush at the local art store. Works really well. And there are a few other brushes that I use quite often that I also kind of got through the art supply route. Um, these, I did not even have to go to the Fancy Pants Chromium Yellow in 12 different varieties type art store. These I got from the local drugstores. The one with the blue handle here. I use this to apply my eyeliner. It's very, very thin. I have no idea if it's synthetic or natural. I'm going to guess synthetic. Works really, really well. This one is really, really good for blending. The third thing I want to talk about, it's not so much a supply or a tool or an actual physical object as it is a means of acquiring knowledge. A lot of people want to know, how do I get better at understanding how and where to put things on my face to make myself look pretty? The answer I always see them give is you gotta practice and just play around and find what works for you. And that's true, but something that has helped me to make my sort of trial and error process a great deal more efficient is learning how to draw. A human face. If you watch this sort of art tutorial where the guy talks about, you know, what colors are, you know, shadows on the face, what color are the highlights, it goes into the color theory and it explains it in a way that is free from a lot of the sort of mythology and received wisdom about makeup. Another uh, way that learning how to draw human faces will help you in your makeup application is that where highlights and shadows and such fall on the face, depends pretty much entirely on what's under your skin. What's under your skin? Muscles, bones. You will learn that stuff if you look into anatomy for artists. An example of um, one thing I learned that way is the shadow from the sort of inner corner of my eyebrow down the nose. Like when you're drawing sort of the upper part of the nose, that's how you indicate where the nose is, through that shadow. You can accent that using whatever your contour uh, method of choice is, right? Most makeup people don't talk about it. Try to learn how to draw a human face. You don't have to be Da Vinci, just, you know, look into it. For me, it has made putting on makeup and making myself look awesome and not awful way better. <laughs> you should not buy into the artificial distinction the makeup industry makes between blushers, bronzers, and eyeshadows. I have a blusher and bronzer quad here, and then a little Stila um, eyeshadow kit right here. I'm gonna read to you Oh, how thrilling. The ingredients on the back of both of these. Mica, talc, some strange things from organic chemistry class, phenolized you know, organic compounds involving phenols and butanes and cones and all that kind of stuff, and then pigments. And titanium dioxide, iron oxides, manganese violet, and man, the ingredients in these two things are pretty much identical. Chemically, it is safe to use blush colors on your eyes and vice versa. The ingredients in these will not 
poison you to death. It also works out color-wise. If you apply many types of blush to your eyelids, it'll actually make you look quite good. Vice versa, you'll sometimes see like a lot of MAC palettes that have these like really bright fuchsias, really bright violets, really bright oranges in them, and you're like, man, that would be so cool to have. If you want to get your hands on these, you can use eyeshadows blush, proof I have also tried it. It's the Coastal Scents like 5 billion color palette, right? I have used some of those for blush. They work. So the next point ties into this whole blush eyeshadow equivalence pretty well. It has to do with the contour colors that, that shadows on your face might be closer to a mauve or a purple. They're not gonna necessarily be brown. Sometimes using eye makeup for those sheerish mid-tone purples work really, really, really well to mimic the natural color of, of uh, shadows on my face. You forgot an important caveat! The dragon's right. This tip probably will work best for those of us who are on the pale side and have cooler undertones to our skin. I want to advocate for the use of red eyeshadow. A really cool thing that um, red eyeshadow can do for you, especially if you have lighter colored eyes, the red makes those lighter eye colors really pop. So for example, this color right here, I have it on today. I have it on my lids and then a darker color in the corner. The red eyeshadow also looks really, really nice with dark brown eyes. The geisha in Japan for centuries have been using the like bright pop of matte bright red on the outer corners of their eyes. Most of the time, when you watch people give makeup tutorials, they'll put a light color all over their lid first. Then they'll go into, you know, the very dark outer corner colors. Every time I do that, and I've tried a lot of times with like a lot of different color combinations, but it never looks as good as it does when I apply the colors from dark to light. So I take my darkest color and I put it on the outer corner first, and then I put, you know, the uh, lighter colors. The strange thing is I never see anyone else apply their eyeshadow in that order. Comrades, you made it to the end of this long thing about makeup. Um, I'm really, 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 really curious to know uh, if anyone else does these things, if um, and anyone else has found these tips to like, you know, suddenly solve all their problems. Um, or if everyone does them and they're so obvious that no one really feels the need to discuss them. So leave a comment or uh, send carrier pigeons or, or smoke signals and please let me know what you think.